Azure Digital Twins just got overhauled with tons of new updates. And today on the IoT show, I have Ines and Christian to tell us a bit about what's going on on Azure Digital Twins for connected environments. Hi, everyone. This is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, we will talk about digital twins updates. And for that, I have Ines and Christian. Ines, a little bit of introduction about yourself real quick. Hey, hi, Olivier. Yeah, really happy to be here. Uh, my name is Ines, and uh, I lead the PM team building the great experiences with Azure Digital Twins. Awesome. Hey, Christian, thanks for joining the show. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, hey, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Christian Trommen. Um, I'm a PM working on Digital Twins and a few other bits on the Azure IoT platform. Awesome, guy. Thanks a lot for joining today. So Digital Twins is a service that has been actually announced something like a year ago. Um, we did do some big announcements at Build a few weeks um, past. And, and actually, we want to talk about these updates. So Ines, let's get into it. What's new about Digital Twins? What is the big news? Yeah, uh, so we really have uh, four core capabilities. One is really the open modeling language. Uh, you can create your custom uh, domain models using uh, Digital Twins definition language, which is our open uh, Digital Twins um, uh, language. And you can now model all sorts of things, people, places, things for a variety of use cases, You know, as we just chatted and, and talked about. Uh, in addition, you can really bring these models to life in the live execution environment. And again, this is really where you can leverage, uh, you know, query, uh, really rich query APIs to capture all sorts of insights. Uh, and we also have the, you know, compute engine to do everything from, you know, business uh, logic and data processing that really help you capture interesting insights that you care about from the, you know, the world that you're you're bringing to life into this graph. Um, and uh, not only do you have these, you know, live graph capabilities, you can also now feed, uh, you know, various types of inputs that you want to reason about, you know, in the context of your Azure Digital Twin. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be anything from, you know, IoT uh, and IoT Edge devices, you know, so from IoT Hub to really augment your graph representation. Uh, that can also be uh, other business systems that you're using as part of your solution. We now have, uh, you know, REST APIs that you can directly use to, uh, you know, uh, ingest that data into your graph and, and really coalesce that with all the other data points and data sources you care about to, to get really great uh, insights for, for your business use cases. Uh, and in addition, uh, you can obviously take all of the great insights from the graph that you're capturing that's helping you to reason about what you've modeled and output that to, you know, various services that we know unlock different use cases for you, whether it's um, time series insights, if you want additional historian capabilities, uh, whether that's storage, so, you know, so you can do more or, or analytics, uh, we know, with Azure Synapse and more to do, you know, kind of deeper, uh, you know, AI focused uh, analytics on, on all of the things that you've modeled and captured insights about. Awesome. These are indeed a lot of uh, changes in addition to the to the original preview that we uh, announced last year. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that leads to the question for customers who have been adopting that first version of that preview for Azure Digital Twins, what does that mean for them? What is it that they need to look into adapt change in this new version of that Azure Digital Twins preview? Yeah, no, great question, Olivier. So the smart spaces and smart buildings focus continues to be really critical for Azure Digital Twins. And we had a lot of great partnerships and a lot of uh, developer feedback on various things that we're you know, excited to share that we've improved with this new version. Uh, one is we already touched on is the modeling. Uh, now you can take advantage of that and do a bit more, uh, even for some of your existing smart spaces use cases using you know, DTDL. Um, flexible topology. So the current version ha has a tree uh, for, for to capture all the insights, you know, as we you query for various things. Uh, but now we're moving to you know general graph topology. We had a lot of great feedback from customers around use cases that required more of a graph understanding of what they were modeling and not not just a tree based. Um, we also had you know, also good feedback on the compute experiences with the current version. We had a great start with you know, user-defined functions that were you know, JavaScript-based, uh, but we know that moving to something like you know, Azure Functions gives a lot of the developers 
uh, you know, language of choice in, in terms of programming languages and, and much better kind of, you know, debugging and tooling experiences uh, to really have a much better integration for, for all things compute. Um, and then, yeah, there's uh, IoT Hub. We, we had a lot of great customers who are using IoT Hub to do things around managing and monitoring devices at scale. And uh, with the current version of Azure Digital Twins, they're not able to really access all those core capabilities fully because Azure Digital Twins uh, kind of encapsulated IoT Hub. Well, with the, the version that we just announced and are releasing, you can bring your own hub, which, which also means that not only do you leverage all the great capabilities of that IoT Hub provides uh, natively, uh, it also makes uh, the migration simpler. If you already have a bunch of existing IoT projects and you are using IoT Hub, it's really an inc incremental step to, to take advantage of the Digital Twins capabilities uh, and, and get some of the richer insights uh, for your connected environment. And um, last but not least, scalability. Uh, you know, we, we made some good progress with the, the current version, but, you know, as the use cases expanded for a lot of our customers, uh, the scale target and requirements became much greater than what, than what the current preview provided. Uh, so we've, you know, spent quite a bit of time on, you know, a new and improved architecture. And, and we'll be sharing the scale targets uh, with the public preview. You know, look at look for that in the documentation. But it is um, much better and higher scale than what we delivered with the the previous version. And we're really excited for that because a lot of our customers are trying to go to production with Azure Digital Twins, and uh, we're excited to see that this will really set them up for success in the next few months. This is great, uh, and essentially, it seems you guys have really done nice work at checking all the boxes of all these asks from our customers and all the feedback. When I've been presenting and talking about digital twins to customers and developers over the last year, all of these were, were comments, were feedback. I think you guys definitely rocked it. That overhaul of, of digital twins really, really addresses all these changes and the feedbacks that, that the customers have been providing. Uh, now, I guess what we do want, at least myself and I'm sure our audience, is to check it out. How about we bring Christian back in so that he can show us a demo? Hey, Christian, welcome back. So before we jump into the demo, tell me a bit about you know, what we're going to see, what are you going to show? All right. So, well, Digital Twins really is a developer platform, and developers mainly interact with it using APIs, but watching APIs isn't all that fun. So I'm going to show you Digital Twins using a simple sample web application that we wrote um, uh, called ADT Explorer, and we also plan to make this available as open source for people to play with. Love it. Let's jump in it. So when you start out with a fresh instance of Azure Digital Twins, you first need to configure it with a domain model that represents all the entities and concepts that are important to your business. Basically, what is your business vocabulary? And we do this by uploading a set of models to ADT. And for this demo, I'll upload a simple domain model for a power grid. So um, we click on the Upload a Model button. Um, and uh, then select the set of files that we would like to have. So um, we'll just take all of these at once. And um, now these models get uploaded to the service. And you already have the list of models here. So let's look at one of these models in a little bit more detail. So I'm clicking uh, the info button here and get the uh, model. And um, so this is the DTDL, Digital Twin Definition Language description of uh, the model of the power station. Okay. So let me ask you a quick here question. So uh, it looks like JSON, right? So that's that's something the developers will be familiar with. Uh, and But tell me a bit more about DTDL, what it is, for, especially for people who are not really familiar with it. Yeah, so the Digital Twins Definition Language, or DTDL, is based on JSON-LD, so um, it basically lets you describe what a digital twin is, and it does so by describing it in terms of the properties it has, the telemetry it can send, uh, the relationships it can have with other twins, what components it's made of, so it's a pretty simple to use and comprehensive way to describe digital twins. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks for the precision here. So, um, Next, we will use the models that we have uploaded to create a twins graph. And typically, this is done programmatically. So uh, typically, you would use data that comes from some existing data source, like a building information management system or a CAT system or any other sort of information data source that contains, you know, like the information model of your uh, digital twin. And in this demo, we just use a simple Excel data file that contains all the data that we need, and we create a twins graph from that. So um, let's click the Import Graph button and pick the Excel file we want, um, distribution grid. 
And um, this will now first create an, an, a preview uh, view of the graph that we're loading. So to make sure that we're loading the right graph and I can now hit the start import button. And uh, this will now create all the twins that are described in the data file on the service and create also all the relationships that are associated with that. So um, next thing, um, just to prove that the data really exists on the server, let's run a query. So um, up here I can uh, type in queries to, to run against the service and the default query that is already here is select star from digital twins, which effectively selects all the twins that are in the database. I'm gonna run query and um, digital twins now retrieves all these twins and all the relationships between them and draws them um, in exactly the same graph that we have seen in the preview, but this time the graph is coming from the service. Um, you can now also play around with this and look at the data, um, you know, like using different layout mechanisms and different layout forms. And, you know, depending on what you're trying to see and what your data looks like, different layouts um, can be useful. So let's select a twin in this graph. Um, so the property inspector here at the right now lets us see all the data that is actually in the twin. So we can see all the metadata and all the data fields. And I can also edit these. Um, so for example, change the capacity of this power grid. And um, I can then patch this data back to the service, sending basically a patch request. And so ADT Explorer also shows us here how this patch actually looks like. This is exactly the JSON patch information that is sent via the REST API to the service to actually update that twin. So to close, let's just for the fun of it, create um, a couple of twins manually. So um, I'm first gonna pick a delivery substation and add a twin for that. Let's give it a name, let's call it sub. And I'm gonna create a farm um, to take the power from the delivery substation. Let's search for my farm here, okay. Let's call it my farm, okay. Okay, now I have the second twin appearing here. And now we just need to wire this up to the power grid. So let's first wire up the substation uh, to the farm. Let's create a relationship. Um, and so the available relationships in the model is the feeds relationship. So the substation feeds the farm. Um, and so now we have that, and now let's connect the substation here to the main power grid. So, so let's select that and the substation, and again, create a relationship, hit save. And so now this, uh, you can see it down here, now this subgraph has been added to the substation and we have edited the graph. Easy. So so, mu so much really um, for, for this quick uh, uh, demo. Um, there's really a lot more to digital twins, a lot about event handling, data processing, routing to external data source, uh, data destinations, and so on. Um, but the important takeaway really is that digital twins lets you create a rich domain-specific voc vocabulary to model your business environment, and that you can then bring this environment to life by driving the model with real-time data from IoT and many other data sources, and that you can query the model to extract insight and send this information or the data you generate to downstream services for long-term storage, for analytics, or for further data processing. And that's really at the heart of Digital Twins. And um, that's all I wanted to show for today. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Christian. Thanks a lot, Ines, for that insight into Digital Twins. A couple more questions. First one is, can you tell me about some of the partners or customers who are using Digital Twins today uh, to give an idea about the scenarios that we should expect? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of customers and partners already leveraging Digital Twins, including the new capabilities, which has been great. Um, and there's two partners we would like to highlight. Uh, Ansys, again, a great partner who's doing, uh, you know, physics-based uh, digital twins and all things, you know, simulation uh, related, which has been a great, you know, we've worked with them on a joint POC uh, and a really interesting use case for us that we learned a lot, uh, a lot from. Uh, our other partner, uh, Bentley, is focusing on, you know, infrastructural digital twins. So you can picture all the use cases around capturing insights and operations for, uh, you know, big, um, not just buildings, but bridges, roads, uh, and all of those things where you need to really get quick insights and gain uh, quick decision makings for when things go wrong. And they've also closely collaborated with us on a, on a POC to highlight some of those use cases.
Nice, nice connect and vermin scenarios. I love it. Uh, and as a matter of fact, actually, it was not an innocent question because we're going to have both of them on the IoT show soon. So don't forget to tune in for following uh, episodes of the IoT show with Bentley, with Ansys to talk more about digital twins. We also will have a deep dive with Pamela uh, to really look under the hoods uh, what's new in digital twins. Uh, once again, Ines. Christian, thanks a lot for joining the show today and give us, giving us an update. Uh, for you watching now, if you want to learn more about Digital Twins and the new preview, you can go to aka.ms slash IoT show slash Digital Twins. Pretty straightforward. Ines, Christian, see you soon on the show. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.